and welcome to this week's SharePoint Framework and JavaScript Special Interest Group bi-weekly meeting. It is March 30th, 2017. I am Patrick Rogers, joined as always by Vesa Yuvonen. Hi, Vesa. Good morning, or evening, or wherever you're calling from. <laughs> Vesa's all turned around. He's out in Seattle this week, so uh, things are a little crazy. But uh, so what is the JavaScript special interest group all about? For folks that might be new to the call, uh, we have uh, we are exist under the larger SharePoint Patterns and Practices program, and it came out of the idea of giving folks a forum that was a little more focused in our case on client side development. <clears throat> and uh, there's other uh, special interest groups, for example, PowerShell or the CSOM, if you're a little more interested in those areas, and you are. are of course, encouraged to attend more than one special interest group if you have the time and the interest. But on this one, we focus on an open discussion around the SharePoint framework, uh, what's new with that, latest developments, uh, gathering feedback from folks. We get some invaluable feedback from folks on the call here, ideas, problems, uh, enhancements, uh, and then client-side development in general, so talking about JavaScript development and uh, things like that. And then as well, we talk a little bit about the JavaScript core library that we've been developing uh, alongside sort of the rollout of SharePoint Framework. And we just did uh, a webcast, which was released this last Monday, I believe, on uh, talking about kind of answering that question, what is that JavaScript core library? What is how, What do we see its purpose? Um, and how do we see that growing? And then how does that relate to SharePoint Framework? So I do encourage you to check that out. Um, I think it's a it's a good session. Uh, it's a little bit of talking and a lot of demos, so do do check that out. Let us know what you think about that. <clears throat> Two links down there at the bottom to get involved. The first one takes you to the Microsoft Tech Community. Great place to uh, get uh, questions answered, have discussions, reach out to other folks uh, just in the community and get uh, the discussions going. And the bottom link there is the dev.office.com slash SharePoint. That is your one-stop link for all things SharePoint development. So new SharePoint framework, if you're getting into that and just learning about that, great tutorials and walkthroughs on the SharePoint framework. But if you're still, uh, you have added development, you have, uh, you have add-in development you're working on, or even like classic full trust code server-side development, resources are all being centralized to dev.office.com slash SharePoint. That is, of course, always a work in progress, but that is where we're working towards getting all of our resources for developers. So that's your one-stop shop, so check that out, and uh, you should be able to find uh, what you need there. So what's our agenda for this week? Uh, we're going to do a quick update on the JavaScript core component, the latest on the SharePoint framework, I have a quick demo on easily checking the permissions with SP, PNP, JS. This is something we just added uh, based on feedback from out there in the community, so I'm going to show that off a little bit. And then we'll have plenty of time for open discussion. Um, this might be a little bit shorter meeting. We didn't have, uh, I know Vesa was traveling all week, and I've, uh, uh, my quote unquote real job has been uh, super busy this week, so did not have too much time to prepare, but should have a good demo and plenty of time for discussion, so love to hear from folks in the community. Did want to highlight so Patrick, I, I have to jump on that one. That's always a great way of starting any presentation. We yes. do apologize, but the quality of the presentation won't be as expected. So. Well, the presentation <laughs> quality will be great. It will be the length. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> quality well, undiminished. <laughs> But uh, so I want to highlight opportunities to participate here in this call or in sort of the community uh, in general. So you could demo on this call. We invite folks to have demos and to join in. We've had some great community demos the last few weeks. Um, so but demo a SharePoint framework web part. Are you working on something cool or just trying something out? We'd love to see it. It's a great way for the community to learn about uh, what you what you folks are doing, as well as uh, you know just what the SharePoint framework is capable of. Demo anything related to the core library. Always love to see that. And of course, demo anything related to client side development. Certainly welcome that as well. Contribute on GitHub or provide feedback. So we, like I said, we get lots of great feedback from out there in the community, and it's super valuable to have that and to be able to uh, enhance what we're delivering based on that feedback to really help folks be successful. So quick update on the JavaScript core component. 
Um, so 203 is going to be released next Friday. That's April 7th. I think the milestone in GitHub says April 8th, but that'll probably go out April 7th, that Friday. So that'll include everything um, that's been checked into dev or merged into dev, uh, slipped into TFS speak there. And then um, I'm planning to get a few more things, but as I said, uh, we're working with the milestones now in the issues list to try and give everybody a better view into what's going to be part of each release and what we're trying to get into each release. So that's a great way to track things as well. Um, feedback continues to drive the updates. Uh, for example, the permission stuff we'll show here shortly, but as well, uh, just sort of finding those bugs, getting you know those things fixed. Uh, really appreciate that feedback. I like to say that every week. So please do uh, continue to bring that feedback to us. Um, I did want to make uh, one quick statement on uh, the issues list in GitHub. Um, I'm seeing where some folks, after issues have been closed, are sort of continuing on the conversation in there, which I think is fantastic. But I did just want to say, please do uh, reopen the issue. Um, so if you have more questions or want to continue a discussion uh, around a certain issue or around a certain topic, please reopen that just for visibility's sake. Um, it'll help uh, for myself and for everybody else involved. It'll help show that that discussion is still ongoing because once stuff gets closed, it tends to kind of just sort of get buried down um, and lost, right? So if you do want to continue a discussion, definitely please do that, but please reopen that issue just for visibility's sake to help us uh, make sure your stuff doesn't get missed um, and don't think that we're ignoring you. It's just that we're not seeing it when it's a closed issue. And the last point, I wanted to say uh, the usage continues to grow in the library, which I think is a really exciting thing to see just how quickly this is growing. So the left-hand chart is both the requests and the unique tenants per month. So you can see we went from January about 340 tenants up to 420 tenants, and now we're up to about 520 tenants. So we're adding about 100 tenants a month, which I think is super exciting, but we're also adding about 3 million requests a month. So if you draw that trend line out, in a few years we'll have an infinite number of requests. I think that's how statistics works. but um, Really exciting to see that growth, really exciting to see more people using the library and finding value in the library, and I think that also helps. We're getting new folks come in and give us feedback, which is always fantastic to get fresh points of view or folks using the library in different ways and finding uh, ways we can enhance it. So awesome to see that growth. And the right-hand side graph is our uh, NPM downloads, and so each of those represents downloads in a month. And I'm sharing this one just to highlight uh, not necessarily the raw numbers, which I think are fantastic. So we're up to about 1,500 uh, downloads in March, and that was as of a few days ago. Um, so we'll probably end up right about there at the end of this month or pretty much at the end of the month. But I think uh, for me, this highlights the value of the monthly releases and keeping on a steady cadence of releases. So absolutely going to keep that going, um, the monthly releases, and you know gives us a little bit quicker response to feedback uh, from folks. Uh, Patrick, just a yes. quick question on that slide before we go to the SharePoint framework. Uh, so what's with the first uh, chart? Why does the chart uh, start from January, February, March, jump from August? Is that a Power BI clip? That is, no. So that's August of last year is when we started collecting data. So that's when we started getting the data on the usage. And you can see yep. we had very little because August was probably just me making sure it worked in my tenant. Absolutely. And then, so then we got the growth through September, October, November, December, wrap around then to January 2017. No, no, I'm, I'm just, it's that a Power BI glitch that it's showing January, February, March before August, just out of curiosity. Because it looks, uh, the chart looks like we plummeted at some point, which isn't true, obviously, but. No. Uh, that's just how the data comes out of Power BI. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So cool. Why did it wrap? Because. It, it does? I don't know. So that's August 2016. Good point. We have not plummeted all the way from March to August yet. So that's August yeah. 2016, and you're seeing it then wrap around to March 2017. Yeah. Um, so, Just to clarify the chart, yep. that was the purpose. Yeah. 
Yep, but I did want and, to thing, all. Yep, go ahead. And one thing what we can probably see on the on the uh, previous days, uh, we did release the webcast on Monday uh, related on uh, the BMP chair score. So hopefully we can get even more people testing the library. And it is a awesome, awesome library to take advantage. Yes. Um, do encourage you to use it. Try it out if you haven't. I imagine if you're on this call, you you've maybe have tried it out. Um, so, But do, if you haven't, please check it out. Please let us know how we can make it better. Um, but I think if you look at, if you kind of shift everything over, I think it shows a phenomenal growth rate from August of last year through now in terms of usage. And uh, I want to keep uh, driving that and making it better and seeing that growth uh, continue. So, and yep. so I guess as well, a big thank you to everybody out there that is using the library, of course, and uh, providing that feedback. So with that, I think we're into a SharePoint framework update from VESA. How, how come we didn't haven't updated the slide? Uh, because it's still saying release candidate. I have no idea how we missed that. Uh, this is the second time in a row. You know, we should absolutely update that. Um, SharePoint Framework absolutely in GA, uh, so we don't have massive amount of new stuff during these past weeks, but I wanted to talk about certain uh, areas, uh, like the roadmap and what are we working on right now. We talked about those things two weeks ago as well, um, and then open up uh, discussion uh, for uh, discussion for open for discussion and questions as well. Uh, one thing maybe to notice that the, the logo on the right side, um, absolutely not an official SharePoint Framework logo. I just drew that in PowerPoint. When was it? I, I can't even remember, just for fun. Um, but I think we should have a logo for SharePoint Framework uh, uh, in the future, and I'll chat with Mike on that one today. Anyway, uh, so actual content, uh, not about the marketing. Um, so uh, for the uh, guidance um, area, so for the articles and everything else, we have two new kind of big uh, articles. Uh, so obviously we've been more concentrating on updating existing documentation uh, in the dev.ops.com slash SharePoint uh, and SharePoint Framework and WebPath's guidance. This is the area where we're adding this guidance documentation. Uh, we've been updating many of the existing documents to the GA level. Uh, it is a time-consuming task, unfortunately, uh, because it, it just requires time to test everything and make them code them true. Uh, and we do not, unfortunately, have a massive amount of technical writers uh, behind of us. Uh, one kind of a new thing which has been released uh, was it on Monday? I think it was on Monday. Um, it was the SharePoint Framework Covenants consider Consideration. And that's a really good article actually explaining uh, if you are a tenant administrator or an architect, uh, what are the things what you should be considering uh, before you take SharePoint fr Framework solutions into use. Um, well, not in a negative way, more in the, hey, as an example, this SharePoint Framework web parts, uh, the JavaScript is hosted in CDN uh, somewhere. So if you don't actually think about it, uh, it might be fine um, for a long time, but who actually owns the CDN? What's the uh, CLA, uh, SLA for that CDN? Uh, what would happen if that JavaScript file would actually get ripped off from the CDN? Um, and that would actually have an impact uh, on, the, on the end user experience. Uh, you can actually use the, the SharePoint framework uh, CDN to host your uh, JavaScript files directly in the SharePoint online, uh, which is something what we will provide more guidance during next week. So we're closing into uh, GA uh, uh, global uh, general availability around the Office 365 or SharePoint uh, CDN. Uh, we do have some interesting uh, enhancements uh, there as well. Uh, so you can actually do a more secure CDN inside of your uh, organization if that's needed. Again, it depends uh, on the objectives. But we'll have more on that one next week. But that relates absolutely on SharePoint framework uh, deployments as well, because that enables you to easily host those JavaScript files in SharePoint Online, in a library, but it's uh, shared through a CDN URL, which will make the performance faster. And so that way, you will own the location where the JavaScript files are, as an example hosted. There's some other things uh, on the on the governance consideration article, which are good to kind of read uh, if you're an architect, if you're a tenant administrator, or uh, responsible of these governance considerations, because it's good to be aware of the things to consider. Um, like, like for example, uh, just the approval processes around SharePoint framework uh, client-side reports. So, good article, uh, absolutely worthwhile to have a look on. Um, the next line is more around the videos. So, uh, and I somehow 
Oh, no, I didn't actually miss that. Good. So we don't have massive amount of new videos since past two weeks. Uh, essentially, the, really the latest new one uh, is the PMP webcast around what is the PMP JS core JavaScript library, uh, which went live on Monday uh, this week, available from the YouTube videos. So AKMS SP PMP videos is the easiest address to access that. Um, and that's a really great uh, webcast, um, kind of a refresh uh, on explaining what is a PMP JS core, what's its value, how you can use that in a classic SharePoint or within the SharePoint framework, because that's one of the benefits fits out of the PMP JS core uh, and really walking through kind of uh, why why would you could be why could you be interested on, on using that it's not a must it's not a requirement uh, it's an add-on library uh, and you can absolutely keep on using whatever you are using but it might be something to have a look uh, it really is increasing uh, the, the productivity of the development uh, when you're developing against SharePoint online or on-premises as well actually um, one of the things um, so on this one, actually, so we obviously we, we want to match um, the videos and guidance and everything else based on what you guys and girls um, and what the audience actually needs. So really, your input would be highly valuable uh, around the around the fact that well, you might be thinking that hey, why haven't those guys actually done a video or a guidance around this topic? Um, and we absolutely want to do that. Just let us know. Uh, you can do it, you can put input now, right now in the IAM window, uh, or have a discussion in the tech community and CC us, for example, those uh, discussions. Um, because we need to understand what's actually missing for you to be successful with client side web parts, and we want to address them. So that would be a good thing uh, if you have ideas around webcasts and videos and demos and, and guidance articles and all of that. So we absolutely want to address that. Oh, good point from Russell Gove. Uh, absolutely. Uh, really, really good point. So the Office UI Fabric, we need uh, guidance on that one and the usage uh, guidance on the Office UI Fabric, especially on the context uh, of SharePoint uh, framework or SharePoint, natively SharePoint Online, is using one version of the Office UI Fabric. What if you are using Office UI Fabric and a slightly different version? What does it actually mean? What is the practices of doing that? Uh, we actually had an article live on that one last week. We needed to pull that uh, because we are doing small changes still on server side, and that's going to go back on live, I think, early next week, which is kind of an explaining the best practices um, on, the, on the usage of Office UI Fabric within your client site web pods. Um, it doesn't actually explain the step-by-step -step how to get started, which no doubt uh, we should do as well. That's a good reminder. Thank you, Russell, on that one. Uh, it could be a simple, relatively fast PMP web test, which is actually explaining how to, how to get started with using that and how to get started on using Office UI Fabric React components um, and combining that with the practices, how to avoid the versioning challenges around that one. Good. Um, cool. Uh, moving on on things. Uh, so this one slide, I've shown this quite a few times, uh, but I updated that now because it has been now updated fully on the GA level. So we do have a Getting Started SharePoint Framework training. Uh, I'm still in progress of having discussions with the, our marketing people that, hey, how do we actually want to push this out? Uh, because this is part, uh, this is joint uh, development and creation by us in the PMP team, engineering and marketing and, and all of that. So I don't want to act too uh, independently on that, uh, but you should see more announcements uh, on this one and more kind of a detailed description on the training as well. If you go to the AKMS SPFX training, uh, there is a readme file which is already uh, defining what the training contains, what are we looking to enhance that, uh, how to use that, and all of that. So right now we do have videos, uh, sorry, presentation demos, demo labs, uh, and recorded videos are coming starting from next week. Uh, again, uh, I'm traveling in Seattle this week, so I can't actually do uh, proper recordings. Well, I'm pretty busy during the time. Uh, I wouldn't be traveling here otherwise. Um, but the whole point of this package is that you can use this any way you want. So if you are a consultant or a training company or whatever, you can take this and repackage that in, in a smaller pieces for a two-day training, three-day training. You can extend that. You can use the slides. You can use the labs uh, any way you actually want to do. Uh, it's all free to you to use any way you want. Um, 
And we just got a, a last week, I know that there was a one MCT uh, Microsoft Certified Trainer uh, used this material uh, to deliver his local uh, uh, training in one, one country. And we got some feedback on that one uh, as well. So if you do have any feedback around, if you use that material and you do have any feedback, uh, feel free to send an email which did I actually say that out loud uh, because my inbox is exploding, um, or contact us and give us feedback around the content of the material. It would be good if we would get it collected actually on a GitHub, uh, on an issue list, so we can actually further enhance uh, the material. Uh, but these are the quotes uh, from the training material for which was delivered last week uh, for, I think, for 30 attendees. Uh, and the input was that overall modules were rated as good, solid training content, uh, rated better than uh, the generic SharePoint MOC content uh, the participants were used to, which is good, and it's good feedback on us. Uh, SharePoint mock materials are pretty OK as well. Uh, all the exercises worked, uh, which absolutely is the intention as well, but it's good to, have, good to have somebody external to confirm that as well. Uh, and then there was a request already that, hey, what about adding a Microsoft Craft module? Uh, so we would be having a module around the SharePoint Craft endpoint and usage uh, in the package as well. Um, and one of the things on, on related on that one is no doubt that w what we want to do with this package is that we want to provide you, let's say, in a year it might be 20 modules. The intention is not that you would be using 20 modules in your delivery. You can actually pick and choose. Uh, so you can build your own training packets for your personal usage or for your training company uh, based on, let's say, the time, what you want to spend on the on the delivery. If you have one day, if you use different set of slides than when you have a five days. Um, and good point from Ralph, uh, Craft and Flow uh, is good input. Now, like mentioned, all free for you to use any way you want. Um, if you want to use those slides in your presentations, in seminars, absolutely do that. Uh, if you're an MCT, you can use it as a source for the material. MCT means Microsoft Certified Trainer, or if you're in a training company, feel free to use that as well. Please provide us feedback. That's really important. We want to keep on investing and improving this material. Uh, so, in, so we wouldn't have, let's say, Numerous, numerous training packages which are competing between each other. Uh, what we want to do in the future is to be, let's say, more practical and also cost efficient. So we would have a one set of training packages which are coming from Microsoft, which you can use any way you want, uh, and we keep on evolving that. Rather than what we used to do in the past, which was, hey, there's a training packet, so there's a training packet, so there's a training packet, and then nobody keeps on evol uh, improving them. Um, Good input on the on the iron window, absolutely. Uh, so, oh, and that's a, actually no. Patrick has a that's a slightly different topic. Let's come back on that one before we start the demo. But let's start that discussion, absolutely. And um, what are we currently working on? So this is more around the visibility, and I I forgot to add uh, the the URL for to our roadmap, and these are actually coming from our public roadmap. Uh, one of the feedbacks what we got from uh, this roadmap, I'm going to give you the uh, AKMS link in a second, I'm just verifying that, uh, is that it's actually missing uh, oh. It's actually missing the, the timings and the priorities. So, and that's something what we want to actually tell you uh, in the calls. So you would be up to date on what are the next things, what are we actually uh, working on, and what might be coming up uh, at some point. So here's, Here's the, the, the actual link uh, to the official document in the devtops.com where we have the whole roadmap uh, discussion. But we're looking into obviously getting the docs from the GA level. That's been a really good progress. Updating SPF examples to the uh, GA level, absolutely in a good uh, progress. Updating training materials to GA level, already done, which is good. Uh, but then uh, on the new capabilities, so we don't have a timeline uh, right now when this will be available for dev preview, but it's actually good for you to know that we're already working on this uh, into engineering as well. So we're looking into uh, having the web part to web part connections, uh, so the web part can actually talk between each other uh, using this kind of an eventing mechanism. Uh, first, probably using just code, and then the, the long-term vision is that the end users can do connections on the web parts, and those web parts which are exposing the same interfaces, almost like the same thing uh, back in the farm solution timeframe. Uh, if if anybody of you have implemented uh, classic 
farm solution wet part connections. You need to actually define the connection, uh, the connection interfaces, and those were then exposed in the UI. Uh, we're looking into having modern UI extensions, uh, so modern chess link and user custom action uh, replacements, um, and these will contain uh, essentially additional YAML templates. So right now in the GA version of our uh, SharePoint framework, if you start running the YAML, uh, Yo Microsoft SharePoint, uh, the only option is client, uh, client side web part. Uh, in the future, it will actually ask what is the component name, what you're looking for, and then you can choose an extension. Um, and what kind of an extension, because there's quite a few extensions in the UI, JSLink has a different implementation than user custom action, as an example. Um, and then in the Yeoman template will generate you the structure, and then you're able to actually start implementing that. Really, the, the key point on this one, maybe I'm going to repeat this probably uh, for years to come. Um, we're not going to actually enable JS Link and user custom action uh, as such in the modern experiences of SharePoint. Um, and the reason for that one is that we, um, the current implementation of JS Link and user custom action works in a way that as long as you're a site owner, you can actually hook this in. So as a tenant administrator, you don't have a centralized control which of the customization can be enabled. Um, and that's what we want to do with the modern UI extensions. Um, you will be still able to inject, uh, let's say, uh, analytics, JavaScript on a site, a page, or uh, some additional um, hooks on the page, or uh, elements, or controls, or functionalities on the page. But the key difference uh, with the modern exp extensions is that to be able to use the extension in a site, the tenant administrator needs to go and approve the extension because it's a JavaScript. It's JavaScript which is running in the context of the browser. Um, and people maybe in the past didn't actually consider that a, as a massive deal uh, with the classic, let's say, user custom action JS link implementation. But it was always there where kind of a small concern uh, that is, it is a JavaScript which is running in the context of the user. Uh, and that has some additional implications. So by using the modern UI extension model, uh, the, your customizations are safe and they're being approved by the tenant administrator before, before they can be used within the sites. So there's this approval flow uh, to make that happen. Uh, and we're also looking into doing workbench improvements. Uh, so there's not a massive amount of improvements, some level of improvements. As an example, if you joined any of our uh, BMP see some core or PowerShell provisioning uh, special interest groups. We've been showing how to create modern pages with the modern web parts uh, using APIs. And one of the challenges of doing that is that you need to understand what is the JSON plop for a modern web part. Uh, and we can actually expose all of that data uh, from the workbench. So you're able to configure a web part, click a button, and you get the, the needed blob or JSON blob, which you can then use to create pages programmatically uh, on modern sites uh, and get the web part there uh, automatically. Good. Um, I don't have a, like mentioned, I cannot promise you a timeline. I cannot not say that this will be released the next week or two months or three months or next year. Uh, at this point, we don't want to actually commit uh, on the specific uh, dates or, or I cannot actually give you an exact date. Um, you can, however, draw some conclusions out of the already public May event and also upcoming Ignite. Um, so those are the big dates always for us when we want to actually come up with a either new functionalities or go GA uh, with certain functionalities. Is. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, these are already starting to be in a relatively good shape, so we can actually internally already do some testing and um, further designing uh, on the functionalities. Good. Before we go to the demo, Patrick, um, so but, uh, that's all. I, I do apologize. I don't have anything super massive from the SharePoint framework side, and hopefully I have more on the, on the next week. Um, or oh, not next week, the week after, um, when I'm actually on vacation, so probably I don't have. Um, <laughs> but before we go here, there was an interesting IM discussion, and this has been um, uh, requested by quite a few people, actually. Uh, I was in SharePoint Saturday, Helsinki, on last Saturday. Uh, I think we talked about that one during this week here. Uh, I'm meeting a few MVPs every now and then during this week. Um, around the Fluent API for Microsoft Craft, um, because that could be one element where we start evolving to SPP and PHAS. Um, and Patrick already asked that question in the wine window. So are people, obviously, 
it, would it be cool if it would have a fluent JavaScript API to access Craft? Well, the answer is yes. But then the follow-up question is, would there be interest for the communities to start working with us on this initiative, so it won't be just falling on Patrick's table or the PMP core team's table. And just to sort of elaborate on that a little bit, <clears throat> when we started the library, we left it open. So if you wonder why we have pnp.sp and then chain off of that, the idea was then we could have pnp.graph and then also chain off of that in a similar way. Um, we haven't pursued it yet, uh, mostly because of two reasons. One, time, uh, and two, the uh, waiting to see what capabilities are going to come out of SharePoint framework around graph, uh, specifically around is there going to be a way to spawn a quote-unquote graph context, whatever that might look at, so get the auth taken care of. And if that that then makes it easy, then it's just calling REST endpoints and building out the Fluent API. So, um, I mean, it's something we've thought of since the beginning and had in the back of our yeah. heads. I am and supportive maybe. of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like Ralph was saying, it is a massive API, no doubt. Uh, it would be a gradual way of doing that. We would first access, let's say, calendar, email, prioritize the things, and, and moving along step by step on the, on the pipeline. The other thing that gets interesting is you can – so Graph publishes a – I forget what they call it, but a metadata document essentially telling you all the methods. So one could conceive of writing a generator – to sure. intake that and produce, because um, if you look at the internals, I, I don't know how many folks on the call have looked at the internals of the SPP and PJS, it's fairly repetitive. Um, it, it's just an additive UI or additive API that you kind of chain off of. So it's, I mean, certainly theoretically possible to write a generator. Now, the sure. devil is always in the details. Absolutely. Um, but for graph, who is publishing that document with each version, that could be another interesting idea if somebody, and I'm saying somebody sort of widely <laughs> in the community, um, wanted to work on that. Uh, or or at least us. investigate that option. Yeah, yes. or look at that a little bit. Because um, I think it's really cool. I would like to support Graph. I'll make that statement. I think it would be really helpful. Um, but I think uh, for me, it's a time question for me personally right now. So if we, if folks are interested and this is cool and wants to sort of contribute and help out with this, I think maybe we could form a little kind of loose working group and maybe bounce this around ourselves might be a great way to pursue it. Sure. Um, sure. So, I mean, I'm, I'm all about it. I think it's a great idea and I would like to help support it. I just don't know right this second if I can say I'm going to do it all and get it done and delivered. So what do you mean, Patrick? Come on, commitment, commitment. I don't know. At the end of the, at the end of this week, I'm going to get a lot more free time in theory. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. The one thing is <laughs> good point. But yeah, so uh, kind of a, on the generator thinking, uh, just kind of a. Uh, <laughs> getting some visibility how we do stuff in, in Microsoft in general as well. See some or REST API for SharePoint. That is actually auto-generated from the server-side code. Uh, every single night, whenever our uh, builds are getting uh, executed, we do have a proxy generator which is doing that uh, for us. But it's based on the similar thinking. Um, so as long as you have a source file, you can just scan through the source file um, and the, the graph, accessing the graph endpoints and the model would be pretty much the same on every single node in a graph. So, absolutely. That so I looked be at, uh, just, I, I don't know, since we're just talking, uh, I looked at taking our internal code and generating the rest from that for SharePoint, and it just, it's not quite predictable enough. But That's true. the graph true. publishes that nice document, which outlines yeah. all the relationships and all the methods, etc. And since that's a public thing, like our source code, obviously, for SharePoint is not public, at least at this point, but um, it, it's, uh, it would be, it's, it, it's a solvable problem in, in the space of computer science. So There's a good question from Russell, actually, on time window. How would I get the Graph API document? So where do we have the metadata document? Uh, how to get that to be able to see that? 
That is so shoot. And off the top of my head, I don't remember the URL. Uh, I don't know. Graph. It's somewhere in a graph IO. Yeah, it's graph graph.microsoft.io, right? Yeah. There's a you, you basically it's like the old uh, WSDL. You do a question mark something, and you get back the. Uh, the metadata document. Let me. I'm not going to live research this. Let me. Uh, I'll tweet that out, and we'll put that as a link. Uh, let me make a note. We'll put that as a link when we publish this. Um, good. We can, yeah, we can publish that. Uh, graph API metadata. And yeah, on on Eric is is pointing under the documentation, uh, no yep. doubt. But then we do have that automatic metadata document. Yeah, there it is. Dollar metadata. Oh, there how, we go. How okay. could anyone remember that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but actually, actually, Patrick, it's exactly the same as with SharePoint REST API, so we should have actually thought about that one. Uh, uh, I'm joking. I just it's my my <laughs> poor memory. <laughs> How do we get the metadata with the word metadata? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so let's let's think about the the graph uh, to have that that graph a fluent API for graph uh, starting to move with that one, uh, depending obviously on our interest, and, and it would be good to actually, at least to get started and then. Uh, we can see how do we move from there. But there is a demo waiting. So let's oh, actually... Oh, yes. Uh, let me share my uh, screen. And I will... Uh, I'll, I'll put an issue in uh, the issues list for SBP and PJS to just start a discussion thread on uh, Graph. So I think that would be a good way to get that conversation started. Because I do think it's a cool idea. Um, and if some folks are interested in helping out and participating... Uh, yes, people will be able to see my screen. That's the point. And I think Yina is is absolutely uh, supportive on that one as well. So no problems with them. I was just having a dinner yesterday with Yina and a few other people in here. So Yina, as in the the principal program manager for Graph. So queen of all things Graph. Yes, indeed. So at this point, uh, hopefully, folks can see my screen. Yep, it's the infinite loop of features. Perfect. There we go. So what I want to talk about today was got uh, an issue in, um, actually heard from a couple of folks, uh, one guy on Gitter, and there was an issue around this that said, how do we, or why can't we have an easier way to do stuff with permissions? Um, and so I took that to heart, and we've done a little bit of enhancements, and I wanted to kind of go through what's available uh, in the library right now uh, for permissions. So I've hit F5, and what, we're, what I'm going to do is we're just going to grab all the role assignments. And so what uh, this code is doing is getting all the role assignments. I'm pretty sure I've hit F5. And so we can come in and get all the role assignments for folks. Uh, pardon me. I'm uh, getting over a cold or getting into a new cold. I'm not sure yet. Um, but so we can get all the role assignments. We did not get all the role assignments because why? There we go. There's all the role assignments. So you can get all the role assignments, and these are queryable. Um, so you don't get anything back by default other than the principal ID, but you can select other fields out of there, and then for each role assignment, you've got the various actions uh, you can perform on role assignments. The next step is finding uh, the security parent. So in a situation where you've got the uh, a list or a list item. So real quick, just a quick review on securables. Securables in SharePoint are site collections, webs, lists, or list items. Those are the things to which we can assign individual permissions. So this method, first unique ancestor securable object, um, which has an awkward name, but what it gets you is the thing up the tree that has unique permissions. So if we run that, stop this. If we run that, what we'll get is, in our case, if we look at the code, we're getting a, a list and asking from this list up the tree, what is the next thing in the list that has uh, unique permissions? And in our case, uh, it's a web. And I wanted to highlight again, this is a, a queryable, so you can do select, and in this case, I've selected just the title. 
um, so you can select other fields, but we're getting back a web because in my case, this web has unique permissions. Um, it's also the root web, so it means the site has unique permissions, but this allows you to kind of go up the tree and see where are my permissions either coming from or uh, maybe you want to go up and break inheritance at a lower level or start to figure that thing out. Um, the next thing we had was two methods here, and I'm just going to run both of these. Um, the first was get user effective permissions, which takes a login name. And I just added during these enhancements, get current user effective permissions. It's kind of a shortcut. So if you don't have the login name handy for whatever reason, uh, you can just call, call get current user permissions. And so what we get back is a base permissions object, which has a high value and a low value. And the questions I got in the issues list was super. I've got a high value and a low value. What on earth do I do with that? Which is a very fair question and a great piece of feedback. So it took some time and looked at that and looked at what was happening in the SP, SPJS library. And what we did, I've incorporated that now into these two methods. User has permissions and current user has permissions. So they do the same thing, um, except this one, current user does it with the current user, and ha user has permissions does it with any login. So if I run these, it, we're actually going to get something meaningful back out of this. But you can see there's also now a permission kind enumerable, and it's got approve items uh, and all the others. We'll take a look at that in a second. But you can see I'm getting back true and true. And one thing I just want to sort of highlight, in our case right now, current user is my add-in permissions that I've registered. So since I'm running this in Node, this is going to be the add-in permissions, the client ID and secret is going to be the quote-unquote current user in this context. So if you are running in Node and you actually want a certain user's permissions, for example, Patrick at 318 Studios, uh, you would use need to use that string. But so if we take a look at the permission kind enumerable, it's in the types.ts, but it has all the permissions you would expect, all the ones uh, from that same enumerable you'd find on the client side or the same enumerable uh, you would find in the SP uh, client side namespace if you were to include that. So you can just pass in each of these things and you will get back the correct value uh, for true or false. And if you want to go look at how any of these methods are working, it's in the queryable securable uh, module or library class. And so all of these methods uh, through here are listed, and you can actually see how we're getting the current user, selecting the login name, and then kind of passing back through that get effective uh, permissions method and so forth. And then you can actually see um, how we're doing the math for the has permissions, which was... Um, uh, liberated from SPJS, uh, so uh, that's going to match the behavior that you would expect from the SPJS. Just a kind of a side note, Patrick, on that one. If you go yep. back on the sample, uh, there was a good comment from Peral of this kind of a, well, realities of life. Uh, oh, now we're in an infinite loop of Skype Windows again. So it's around what would be the easiest way to uh, get that uh, user, uh, unique user identity on the account. This guy. Yes. The easiest way to do it is to either, so if you want the current user, the web object has a current user property, and you can and select the login yeah. name. Yeah. If you want it for any user, uh, and you don't know the login name, uh, if you know the ID, for a user, which you probably don't, you can get it that way, or you can do uh, web dot site. What did we call it? Web dot users or web dot site users? Uh, site groups. Web dot site users. This is going to give you back uh, a site users object, and if we go to that, um, you can get them by email. So if you happen to know the email of the user, so if you know just that piece, you could get the user back and do a select and get the login name for that full big string. Uh, if yep. you know the ID, <clears throat> if you know the login name already, you've already solved that problem. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, knowing that string, you kind of have to select it out um, and get it. Um, and that's yep. honestly how I find out my own when I need it. 
Um, there's an article uh, somewhere in the world that uh, will t- tells you how to build all this up and what all this is going to mean. Um, but that's impossible to remember. I certainly don't remember it, so I usually just select it out and get the login name that way. Makes sense. And I believe I'd have to double check where, but that's going to be available in the SharePoint Framework context object. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm forget, I'm forget, I, I don't remember the object path, but it's going to be on that context object as well, the login name. So you should, of, of the current user. So you should yep. already have that uh, loaded as part of SharePoint Framework if you're in that, uh, pardon me, operating in that context. True. Sure. True. It is in the context. I can't remember. It is context current user. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's something like that, but yeah. Um, So anyway, I just wanted to highlight that. Uh, So one, to highlight uh, some new functionality in the library. That'll be in the next release, so it's not there yet. So if if you get the npm install it's not there yet it'll be in the next release but also want to highlight we you know we are listening to the feedback so when you have feedback we think it's super important we take it to heart and we try and you know when it this was an absolute no brainer you know because it's like we get these two big numbers what on earth do we do with them let's give you a way to actually work with that and get some value out of you know what you're trying to do so uh, so thanks for that feedback i thought it was great and we will go back to the slides, if I can get there. There we go. And I'll close. <clears throat> All right. Some people can't see. I'm going to assume everybody can see the demo slide. Yep. So now we're into the uh, open discussion part. Um, uh, so I see there's a question here, uh, Ralph saying, so you would not see a hard code like that in the sample. Right. You typically wouldn't be hard coding in a username. That was just me for the purposes of this sample. You would be getting it from the context or getting it from selecting uh, it from a user object out of the web. Uh, so open discussion. Any questions on SharePoint framework? Uh, we can talk some more about graph. We could talk about the SPPMPJS. And this is the part of the call where you are welcome to come off mute, uh, of course. So um, so that's a, a basic question. Any idea on next updates dropping for SharePoint Framework? Um, I do. We do not have a specific date for that yet. Uh, so it will be a step forward. And most likely some of the new capabilities will be marked as a diff uh, preview. Uh, so we will kind of... Uh, Keep on what we have, but then we will add something and we'll uh, clearly communicate that that's a dev preview uh, for, for the usage. Oh, user voice for SPFX. Uh, we should actually do an AKMS on that one as well. Uh, but it is the, the uh, user voice SharePoint uh, site, and we do have a development. Oh, let me actually. I always go to uservoice.sharepoint.com, which is it's other way around. Um, so user voice for our dev platform, including SPFX, is fine. Uh, how will the update be announced? Whenever we have, whenever we are actually pushing a anything, well, actual updates, which are not just maybe. Well, we're not aware of any bug fixes which we will be pushing. And they will be announced in the dev.office.com slash blogs. Uh, then include uh, definitely the Office Dev Twitter tweets and Twitter account, uh, my account, my Cameron's account. Uh, so we will make sure that people are aware of that. Uh, we saw some folks have created helpers for push out CDM bits. Did we say that this will be part of the cult process? We're looking into getting that one natively within the uh, within the cult process. It's not there yet, um, and the CDN is still in dev preview, um, and it is in preview. And unfortunately, we will break uh, some of this uh, some of the existing PowerShell scripts for the CDN as we release the GA. Um, but we'll provide the guidance on what's missing. Uh, we are actually introducing some new PowerShell commandlets and all of that, um, which we've been polishing those quite a long time, just making sure that we don't have to do any breaking changes in the future anymore where we go GA uh, with, the, with Office 365 uh, uh, public CDN, or Office 365 CDN. Let's put this one. 
there's some good, yeah, there's awesome goodies coming up on that one as well. So it haven't been just polishing common threads. Uh, there's some automation and uh, nice stuff there. And then whenever that's live, then we can actually introduce uh, additional group stops, uh, group tasks uh, in the SharePoint framework natively. So we'll get there pretty soon. Uh, oh, Dean has a, this is a classic discussion with Dean, which is absolutely under, understand Dean's opinion on that one as well. So the Office 365 admin center message, uh, when there would be an update on, let's say, CSM uh, or to uh, SPFX. Now, um, we had an internal discussion on that one uh, with the people who are responsible of the admin center messaging, uh, and the conclusion was that we can't do that right now uh, because we want to prioritize all the actual tenant admin messaging to tenant admin. And the, the, based on our surveys, um, it's just a really small minority of tenant admins who would be looking into tenant admin messages for dev uh, insights as well. Uh, one noticed on that one, uh, we are not planning to do any breaking changes on the APIs. And that's if there's a breaking change on the API, then that's a mistake and that's a bug and we need to fix that. And that, that's why we don't consider the dev improvements or API improvements to be worth of pushing them in the Office 365 Admin Center messages uh, because we're not breaking anything. We're just adding new functionalities and then we use the typical uh, dev.offs.com slash blogs, office dev Twitter account, office dev Facebook account, uh, always for the communications, plus our own personal accounts as well. So. Good. Any other questions, comments? Is Bootstrap part of SharePoint Online? Answer is no. Uh, we the Office uh, SharePoint Online uses Office UI Fabric uh, as the platform. Um, there, at some point, year while back, there was a, a evaluation going on on how do we make this happen. Uh, how do we make things responsive? And there was a bootstrap has grown to be already a massive uh, from a uh, page size perspective. So the, the fabric should be much more lightweight um, and it doesn't increase the size of the page that, page that much. Good. Uh, would it be a good idea, a good or bad idea to put a web part that uses bootstrap elements or is this responsive SharePoint in, or is the, the responsive in SharePoint good enough? Uh, our thinking is that the, the SharePoint, if you use SharePoint framework, if you use SharePoint modern experiences, it is absolutely good enough. Uh, it is scaling and that's designed to enable the pages to be available uh, properly in the SharePoint mobile devices as well. Or the and the goal with that too is certainly for it to be good enough. So if you find a place where it's lacking, that's great feedback. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there a roadmap for modern team site? Uh, I'm not aware of any public roadmap for modern team site, but it, it's, uh, how would I put it? Um, that's kind of a challenging topic for us as well, um, because the modern team sites will absolutely get uh, our SharePoint framework roadmap, uh, what the stuff what we have in a SharePoint framework. So the user custom action, JS link, all of that stuff will be enabled in a modern team site, um, or to be precise, in modern lists and libraries. Um, uh, well, to use a custom actions in, this, in, the, in the site level. And do, do we have a timeline? The answer is no. Uh, do we have one page which is clearly pointing out all of the things from a team site perspective, which will be evolving? The answer is unfortunately no. Um, if you need responsive layout, Fabric UI provides them, absolutely. Uh, dun, dun, dun. Another question, just a quick heads up. A couple of us in PuzzleBots are reviewing BMP, oh, BMPJS provisioning library, which is used for subsite provisioning. We have quite a bit of functionality in the PuzzleBot preferred. I'm sure we could demo it. Oh, yes, let's do that, actually. Um, whenever we're getting closer on getting the BMPJS provisioning uh, to 
the level of maybe we could release a 1.0 version out of it. So let's absolutely demo that uh, or do a PMP webcast or around the functionality is what's happening. Um, I think this six special interest group also is an awesome uh, location to actually demo that as well. Whenever we are in the mature enough level with that one. So. I'm new in the SharePoint framework. SPFX provides provision and capabilities. Uh, answer is actually no. Uh, SharePoint framework itself does not provide any provision and ca provisioning capabilities. SharePoint framework is more a UI layer uh, modification, so you can have fluent, uh, responsive customizations uh, in a using the modern technologies. Um, and then, if you need to provision sites or site collections, you would still fall back on the classic REST APIs or CSM APIs. So it's a combination of things. So SharePoint framework is more a UI framework. In the future, it might we might kind of uh, loop in other things under the umbrella of SharePoint framework. But right now, it's mainly just UI functionalities. Uh, and on the uh, special interest groups, I think we've been trying to do that uh, in the past, but we've been, uh, for this one, we missed it. We're trying to always do agenda uh, communications as well. So we would at least few hours before the special interest group, pre uh, preferably day before, we would send a kind of a, hey, these are the things that we're going to demo as well. Um, and we're trying to improve that in the future. Uh, it is a timing challenge as well. So that would help on, on people knowing beforehand, okay, what's the content? Is that an interesting enough uh, special interest group to actually drop by, or do I want to look, just look the, the recording uh, afterwards? Uh, and Ralph is commenting on the risk, uh, uh, provisioning. Uh, you could always call a web API uh, where PMP stuff is located. So essentially, your client side web part calling a web API, then the web API uses PMP provisioning to actually provision sites and then uh, applying customizations on it. Yes, provisioning is really a service, not a user function. I, I do agree on that. Um, there's a comment around the SP responsive UI for the responsive UI of our site. Should we continue using that? For classic sites, answer is yes. Uh, so for classic team sites in SharePoint Online, classic team sites in on-premises, uh, the, the SP responsive UI is probably the easiest way to go there. It's not a 100% bulletproof, uh, whatever you put on the page, it will make that magically responsive because that's impossible. Um, but the, the modern experiences in SharePoint, the modern team sites, the modern uh, well, group sites, whatever you want to call them, those are responsive natively. Uh, and all of the new things what we're looking into releasing, uh, modern publishing sites, whatever you want to call them in the future, they will be responsive by default. Uh, so um, you don't actually need to inject customizations to make the sites responsive. And Ryan's comment around Azure Functions uh, relates on the, hey, I have a client-side web part. I need to execute some code in a backend. What about calling an Azure function? Absolutely a great uh, option as well. Uh, there was a nice recording which we released. Well, last week, uh, John Liu did a, a nice uh, demo in the PMP provisioning special interest group, because that's bi-weekly a separate call as well, where John Liu showed how to use the, the PMP provisioning engine from PowerShell perspective from Azure Functions. And that video is available in the PMP YouTube channel, so you can actually have a look on that. We're running slightly out of time again, uh, two minutes, but... And we were worried we wouldn't go long enough, but thanks to the awesome community discussion, we made it here to the end. Yes. There's always a question uh, to ask. Yes, so. which is great. That's why we have the calls. It's awesome to see. Yeah, indeed. We really appreciate everybody's participation. I just want to uh, highlight our next meeting will be April 13th. Uh, that's in two weeks. I believe I got that right. So we'll uh, have that meeting. If you'd like to do some demos for the April 13th meeting, I've heard from a few folks. Uh, ping me again, um, remind me, and well, like I said, we'll get some demos lined up for April 13th and look forward to uh, seeing everybody again then. Note copyright 2017 on this slide, but thank you, yeah, everybody. Update. <laughs> <laughs> One update a week. But uh, yes. really, really appreciate everybody's time, participation on the call. Thanks so much for your interest. Isn't that the middle of Easter?
Uh, it is actually. So it again depends. Um, so it depends on the country and depends on the region of the world how people are uh, doing their Eastern. So it is actually in the middle of Eastern, uh, and oh. it depends really on a country how that's being celebrated. So. Well, then we might have to... Uh... Hey, Patrick, you're not... You're classic American. You're not up to date on what's happening in the rest of... No, just kidding. That's a joke. Ooh, Don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, we'll leave that alone. And with that note, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Appreciate everybody's time and for joining the call. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll talk soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.